Hello and welcome to this short video about the sociology exam for G672 Sociology of the Family OCR. Um, we're looking at the specification and I'm going to just make some key points about the uh, kinds of questions that can come up. Um, so the first topic is key concepts and key trends in the family. Um, so talking about each of the topics, there are four topics in the specification. The specification can be found online. This is a paper copy which teachers have, but um, the ocr.org.uk has a copy of the specification. Um, if you search G672 specification um, in Google, then you will get it. Um, just scroll through until you find this page 13 where the family topic starts. Um, so there's four topics. For each topic, there are different uh, bullet points in the specification, which the set text covers um, by War et al. Um, obviously, other books cover the same kind of material. Um, you've got to ensure that you cover the right topics. Um, but for each area, you can bring in evidence that you've learned from other areas. So, for example, key concepts and key trends refers to the nuclear family as one of the key concepts. But you can obviously use your knowledge of functionalism to describe the role of the family and Marxism. And you can also talk about feminists, postmodernists, and new right and the nuclear family. So you've got to bring in evidence across those four areas of the family topic. So the key concepts and key trends section. Um, in, in giving um, questions about this area, they might give a question like, um, identify and explain. It'll always say identify and explain, but then it'll say identify and explain two features. Two features of, and it could say nuclear families, or extended families, or households. Um, so if you get a question like that, the 17 marks, then the way I would look at that is to cover the definition in the first part of my answer and the key words from my definition can be used as features and then I can explain those using evidence. Um, for example, the nuclear family has features of monogamy, um, sexual relationship between a male and a female, traditionally, and so on. And those features can then be explained. So monogamy can be explained from each of the perspectives of the functionalists, the new right, the feminists, postmodernists, new and uh, Marxists. Okay, so that, that is a key strategy. Use the definition, take the key words, and expand on on two of them for that kind of question. The other concepts in this section are the trends in families and households. Family size relates to fertility. The fertility rate is the number of children being born, and so you can talk about the reasons why there are less children being born. Uh, marriage has declined, but remarriage has risen. So first time marriage has declined, but um, remarriage has increased. So in that sense, marriage has declined overall, but some types of marriages are still um, common. Um, so with that one, you can again explain the reasons for that. I would use similar um, concepts for both of these two answers. Um, so I can use similar evidence and I'll explain what the evidence might be. Divorce has increased since the 70s, when it was made cheaper and easier. Um, I would refer to a range of issues to explain this. Um, cohabitation has increased. People living together outside of marriage. Um, again, I can use the same kind of evidence to explain that and just apply it to the question. Single parent families or single person households both increased and again you can talk about similar issues 
Um, so the things I would talk about is you can talk about social changes, um, political changes, economic changes, and cultural changes. Social changes relates to groups and institutions. Political changes relates to influence, power, and status, um, and the rights of groups. So, for example, with groups like women, ethnic minorities, and the working class, we can say they've got more rights to education, um, to um, equal opportunities to work, um, and this has changed the um, workplace as well. So the institution of work has changed and the type of work available, who works, and the family as an institution, and education, and the media have changed in terms of importance. Religion. So those things have also had an impact on society and on uh, family life. You use that for a range of topics, not just the family, but also issues like youth, sociology of youth, if you're doing a different topic um, that you've been taught by a teacher. Um, bearing that in mind, you can talk about economic changes in terms of how we work, what type of work we do, a shift from manual, industrial economy to a non-manual, post-industrial, or deindustrialization um, economy. And we can talk about service work, um, like retail, call centres. Um, we can talk about knowledge economy work, um, like IT, Google, and so on. And that's widened access, generally. Um, education has become more important because of knowledge work rather than manual work. We can also talk about consumption, um, how we consume and what we consume. So the goods and services, products that we buy, wear, eat, drink, um, watch, and view. Um, culture. We can talk about norms and values changing. Um, and that's affected the role of women, etc. And status and roles. Our cultural attitudes to status have changed. We've got more open, tolerant, um, equal opportunities and equality-based culture. Um, so we've gone from a fixed idea of status to a uh, more uncertain uh, choice-based idea of status. And roles has also changed in a similar way. So all of these things can be related to these trends and you can therefore expand on those kinds of issues. So let's just take one example. The fertility rate has decreased. Um, one of the reasons for the fertility rate decreasing is changes to our culture. So that enables me to talk about um, culture of individualization. Okay, the individual rather than society. The idea of choice. I can talk about postmodernists like Giddens. Um, they argue we have uh, pure relationships based on the idea of mutual satisfaction of individual needs. People are having less children. Um, they're not necessarily going to stay with a partner and have children with that partner. And they also choose, because they've got individual autonomy, whether to have kids or not. Um, we could talk about economic changes. And that enables me to talk about um, changes to how we work and who works. Talk about women's increasing economic independence from men, more likely to live alone um, and choose to be voluntarily childless. And there's 10% of women who are voluntarily childless. Um, I can refer to thinkers like Greer, who uh, as a radical feminist, argues women are exploited as wives, mothers and daughters, and therefore many women choose to be childless, to live their lives and focus on themselves, um, rather than um, having children, which is a traditional role for, for women. Um, women have new femininities based on being a career woman, um, and 
demands in terms of consumption. You know, there are changes where people have more um, economic capital, have more money to spend, more affluent, and therefore, um, and, and they're also choosing to spend money on themselves rather than family. So that's um, just a general strategy. Um, you can also split it up in a certain, in a, in a slightly different way. So you could look at it <coughs> in terms of norms and values and status and roles, and then you know you could do that with um, with fertility rate. You could have said norms and values in, in relation to um, motherhood have changed, um, status and roles, women status has changed, and so on. The role of motherhood has has changed. So that that's a slightly different way of looking at it, um, but. There we are, there's some idea, ideas there. Um, if you have any questions, um, send me an email. I'm going to look at the other three sections on separate videos. Um, so email me at daniel underscore butcher at hotmail.co.uk.